Our greatest successes in life are often found in helping others succeed. Welcome to the Life Masters Podcast, hosted by Tanya Memi. Discover real-life stories from mentors, leaders, experts, and everyday people who devote their lives to helping others succeed. Every episode takes you on a unique journey, an emotional experience, and tells a story never to be forgotten. Tune in to Life Masters with Tanya Memi and start fast-tracking your journey to success today. Welcome to another episode of Life Masters. I'm Tanya Mebby. Today we have Blake Leeper in the house. This is awesome. He's a Paralympic medalist and you are a world record holder yes. for the fastest man, right? Yes, fastest man in the world on prosthetic on legs. Prosthetics. Yes, I that mean, is me. Is, <laughs> but the fastest man in the world, how does that feel? Uh, it feels awesome. You know, I, I, I try to, you know, always I, I tell people to humble yourself and, and stay grounded. But, you know, you, you put the work in. You manifest your destiny. You know, every day I wake up, I tell myself I want to be one of the fastest men in the world. Um, I broke the world record for amputees last year um, by going 44 seconds in the 400 meters. First amputee 44 ever. 44 seconds in the 400 meters. Yeah. I just, I can't even. Wow. Yeah. What was that but, moment like for you? Uh, it was, it was amazing. I actually just did an interview the other day and we was kind of talking about the power presence of just being in the moment and, and honestly just having that level of awareness. Yes. Like the, the second the gun goes off and you have to understand I'm running against individuals who have their legs. Um, and yeah, so it wasn't against other, it wasn't yeah. just you're all kind of an even leg, yeah. you know, it around was, here. Then I was the one, I was the only amputee in the race. It was a, a European indoor world champion, some of the fastest European runners in the world. So as soon as the gun goes off, they take off. And, and I'm, I'm go from last immediately. Um, Is it because you have a slower start? Because I have a slower thing? start because I'm, I'm damn running in prosthetic legs. They have their ankle joints to push off on. And for me, I have nothing <laughs> to push off right on. so they right. take off and i just have to stay patient um and it goes back to trusting my training tr trusting my commitment trusting my work ethic knowing that towards the middle of the race I'm, I'm gonna catch back up with them um and when i do don't don't freak out just know that this is the plan this is what i've been planning on doing that i make my move in and it was like the last 50 meters of the race. I just kind of just took off and oh my goodness. I crossed the line. And I and I looked at the clock and I and then I seen the guys that was behind me and I was and it said world record and 44.42. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so this isn't something that you expected either. Like, was this the first time you've ever raced yeah, like I mean, that before? It was the, my first time ever running even under 45 seconds. I've been running, you know, I've been running, you know, 40, 45 low and 45 old. You know, relative yeah. consistent times. Then boom, it just it was like a perfect race on the perfect day. Um, I was relaxed and, yeah. I, and I let it just come to me. I didn't force it. You know, I always tell people when you try to go and force it, even in running, you try to force it, you tense up and you start doing the wrong things. When you relax and, and, and just stay calm and let it come to you and just Well, how do you feel it. about that, though, Blake, when it comes to life in general, that <sighs> whole concept? Yeah, it's um, it's something that I live by. Um, and, and it's tough at times. You have to understand, I was born without legs. Mm -hmm. um, the, the day that I was born, the doctor said I would never walk. Uh, fibula hemimilia. Um, and I always have this conversation with my mother and my father. Mm -hmm. like, what'd you say? Like, you know, dad, who, who'd you hit <laughs> when, when the doctors <laughs> right. told you that your baby boy is never going to walk a day in his life? And they give me the same answer over and over again. And they say, you know what, Blake, we was nervous at first when, when you, they first took you to ICU, but they finally brought you back. And we didn't see all the stuff that you was missing, but we seen the beauty inside of you. Right. And, and we decided to do two wow. things in that mm -hmm. moment. One is to stick together as a family. Mm -hmm. as a unit through the good the bad or the ugly we're going to be in your corner fighting um and the, and the second thing which is something that i tr truly believe in is that we're going to keep a positive attitude towards the whole wow, situation your parents are absolutely yeah they're amazing, amazing. yeah they are which probably amazing. has a lot to do with where you're at in life right now too, a right absolutely just the mindset that they they instilled in me at an early age like i had an older brother and he they were just like blake he puts his shoes on you put your legs on. Mm -hmm. There's there's nothing different about you. This is not a disability. This is just a different ability. Um, and once I kind of got a hold of that concept and say, you know what, I'm I maybe look different than mm -hmm. the normal person. I maybe have to do stuff a little bit different. But the, at the end of the day, I have to wake up yep. and go get it. You I gotta do. wake up and go grind, and I have to wake up. And like we all do. Like we right? all do. Yeah. Like every, <laughs> like everybody yeah. else in this world. So I can't let this set me back. And I have to really go out there and show the world my true talents. Because yes. I do have two disabilities. I cannot deny that, but I have a thousand other abilities that makes me a special person. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> and you're proving them over and over again every day. But what was that like? That 
I mean, what was it like the day that for your parents, especially too, like how old were you when you actually did start walking? Yeah, so I mean, they I was fitted with prosthetic legs at nine months. Yeah. Um, so I, all I've known is wearing prosthetics. I started walking around 10, 11, 12 months. Um, so you were walking. You I ended was, up walking like a, like a normal baby. Sort it, of thing. It, it so is, it really didn't. It didn't hinder me. And people always ask, like, how does it feel to, to lose your legs? You know, and I did have a few amputations um, and yeah. I had a few removals throughout the years. But honestly, I don't remember it. I don't remember oh, even. Oh, you were so young. I was too. so young to, to remember that. You know, I remember surgery a little bit, but the, mm -hmm. the fact that I, I didn't, I don't have nothing to compare to. It's almost a good thing. Cause I, I don't, well, I don't, right. Yeah, so, I, do you ever talk to people though? You know, veterans or anything like that that have lost their legs. Like, you, how do? You yes, know? you know, that's one thing I like to do. I love to run and, and and go around the world and travel, but also I love to tell my story. I love I, I love to be. I, I call myself a motivational speaker. Um, but I'm trying to change it to an inspirational speaker. I'm trying to inspire. I don't. I want to motivate people, but I don't want to motivate them out of fear. I want to inspire them. Yeah, I big want difference. Them, I want them to see my story and say, you know what, Blake did it. So can I. And, and my story is that my adversity is my advantage. Mm -hmm. now, the fact that I was born like this, the fact that I had to deal with this at an early age, allowed me to to get stronger. You know, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Spiritually, it allowed me to learn certain tools and work hard. When if I had my legs, I would never work this hard. Right. So I tell people that all this negativity, where man said that this could be possibly the worst thing that could ever happen to somebody, being born without legs, when actually it's the best thing that ever happened to me. So how many yes. things do we go through in our lives mm -hmm. that we're like, oh, I'm so I hate that we're going. I'm going through this, or why me? You know, or why do I have to go through Did you this? ever have moments like that? Though? Oh, absolutely. Like, what was it like growing up as a teenager? Are you trying Man. to finish it to high school and then college? It was, and... it was tough. I'm not going to sit here and yeah. say it was all sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. I, I can remember I was playing t-ball one season. I was young, about six, seven years old. And that t-ball season, I wanted to hit a home run for my one because my dad was the coach. Heck yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to do it for him. They told <laughs> yeah. him that I would never run. So I hit a home run and would prove to them. And the second is because... My, and you did it. And, and, I, mean, and I did it. Yeah, did it. yeah. <laughs> of course I did it. <laughs> but I remember this one particular time, I get up to the plate and I take my three practice swings and I hit the ball as far as I can. And I'm rounding first base, the first base to second. And on the way to second to third, my leg falls off. Boop. I oh, eat dirt, right? Man. The yeah. kids come over and they tag me out. You know, the inning is over. Um, I have dirt in my face, one leg on, one leg off. I look over to my teammates and they're kind of sad, you know what I mean? They was yelling for me and that was gone. Well, they like you too. They like I me, can right? tell you were very yeah. popular in school, so <laughs> It was yeah. tough. And I look over to my father yeah. and he was upset, not at me, but at the situation. Of course. But I, I remember as I yeah. laid there on, I just, I didn't get it. I was like, why me? Like, why yeah. Why do I have to go through this? I don't, I don't deserve this. Like, why, my teammates have their legs, my parents have their legs, why me? But as I got older, I realized I was asking the wrong question. I was asking something I lost control over. So the more trials and tribulations that I went through, instead of asking why me, I started challenging myself and saying, well, why not me? I'm meant for this. Wow. Why not me? I'm strong enough mm -hmm. for this. Like, why not me? I'm, a, I'm, I'm smart enough for this. I'm a true believer that everything that we go through in our lives is for a reason. Mm -hmm. Or if there's something small or something big, mm -hmm. we should embrace and accept that, that challenge in the moment. And, and we're going to get stronger from that. What is... Um one of the qualities you would say about yourself that has really gotten you from that mindset yeah. to getting through it and, and, and pushing on to, you know, to getting to where you want to go. Yeah. Cause it's hard to it, get back up. It is, it is. And, and, and a lot of people face a lot of challenges and, and failures and, and mistakes and they go left when they should have went right. And, and honestly, one thing that really helps me out is just the perception yeah. and the perspective mm -hmm. of saying, you know what? I know it's tough right now, but it can be way worse. And I know it's hard right now, but I'm thankful in the moment. Mm -hmm. And when you can, can change your perception and your perspective and say, you know what, I'm thankful for this. Yeah. The good, the bad, the ugly. I'm thankful for this because if it's good, great. But if it's bad, even better because I'm going to have to learn certain tools, right? And, and understanding that this is nobody's fault, right? The fact that I was born without legs, it's not my fault. But you've accomplished more than, you know, most right. people will ever dream of accomplishing. Because I too. took responsibility. Uh, Instead of waking up and looking to point fingers and the point the blame life and the blame all the unfair advantages that I have being born without legs, I accepted it and said, you know what, it is what it is. And realized that it's my responsibility to wake up each and every day to put a smile on my face. 
It's my responsibility. Nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to do it for me. I know. I've learned that lesson too. Right? Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to blame people and wasting our time trying to figure out whose fault it is, you kind of just take a step back and just accept the responsibility to fix it. Regardless of who, what happened or who did it to you or how it, how it happened to you, still up to you to figure mm-hmm. it out how you're going to get yourself up and keep fighting each and every day. So you mentioned earlier about um, letting life sort of come to you yeah. instead of, you know, trying and pushing and making and doing and this. And then I find like a lot of people that, um, you know, because I do a little bit of life coaching yeah. myself and I find that I've, you know, fallen privy to this when you push and push and try and think, and you're like, yeah, but I'm doing it, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Yeah. But then nothing's like, nothing, nothing. is <laughs> happening. Nothing. And then you're, you know, it's, it's a really vicious downward cycle. It is. And so how do you feel about letting the universe sort of come to you instead of trying to yeah. make it happen and, and control and, it? And I'm, I'm, I do this myself, especially as a track and field athlete. I want to wake every day that I wake up, I'm trying to break world records, right? I want to go to the track. I want to run as fast as I possibly ever ran. And the reality of it is I have to let it come to me. I have to work on this first. I have to work on my endurance. Then for a few months, and I have to work on my speed endurance for a few months. Then I have to work on my speed. Like it's a collectively of a year worth of training for this one moment. So you're saying set small goals. That's one. And don't try and just, yeah, don't try. It's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. It's not going to. So set small goals for yourself and say, you know what? I'm going to better myself in this today. And you walk away and say, you know what? I'm better than I I was yesterday. And And the reality of it is what I realized, for example, my goal is to win an Olympic medal, right? My goal is to be the first double egg amputee American to ever qualify for the able body Olympics. When are you, when is that? That's yeah, happening hopefully, soon, yeah, hopefully, it? hopefully next 12, between the 12, 14 months of trying to qualify to make history, <sighs> to do something never, nobody's ever done before. But what makes it so special is the fact that it's so hard, right? If everybody had an Olympic medal, if everybody was able to go to the Olympic games, Right. If, if you could just wake up and make the Olympic team and just never train and, and, and win a medal for your country, right. it would have no value to it. The, the struggle, right, the process of you fighting and pushing and fighting, then when you finally get that, that's what makes I mean, the medal is going to be cool. Right. And then being on TV, waving to my family and friends and, and, and making my country proud, that's going to be amazing. But the reason why you see all these athletes at the highest level and, you, you know, they get the championship trophy or the championship ring and they're just in tears and just crying and sobbing because they're thinking about the process mm-hmm. and how special that really was. And that's what separates you from being just average, mm-hmm. which is, you know what I mean, or to being above average and successful and great is enjoying and understanding is it's the process. It's the fact that, you, you know what I mean, you tried and tried and, and, and it didn't happen, then, but you got back up and you tried and tried again and it didn't go your way, but you got back up and kept trying and trying. What makes you, though, Blake, not give up? <laughs> no, 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 I mean it because, like, there are times when I've, yeah. you know, we've all been through really hard times in our life and you yeah. just want to, yeah. and there's people that give up all the yeah, time. They do, they do. And, and, and I say to those people is you have to refocus your energy and refocus your purpose of asking yourself, why are you doing this? What, what's your what's your drive? You know, what, the, what, why. the why, why? Yeah, you hear what people is, talking about that. What is your why? And, and if it's yeah. because you want a, a big, a nicer car or a bigger house or, you know, if because you want the fame or the fortune, you know, you're going to accomplish all that. Then what? Or, then, not. or, or not. not. Or Sometimes not. Sometimes if it's not the right intention, and that's the right intention. it won't yeah. happen. Then what's next? Right. You have to ask yourself. And, and for me, you know, I, I think about all the people who fought for me when I couldn't fight for myself, my mother. My father, my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, my family members. And and I think about, I never forget, I was doing a speaking engagement in in Chattanooga um, a couple months ago. And I was talking to high school basketball guys, but in the crowd was a young amputee. He was about six years old. His name was Charlie, missing both of his legs, right? And Mm -hmm. at six years old, he really didn't understand my my speech or, you know, my points, what I was talking about. He understood, though. He looked at you. He knew. And he walked up to me after the speech and and his parents introduced me to me. I had my my, my Paralympic medals and I was able to show him. And we had the same type of legs and I was able to pick him up, put him on my lap and and show him, look, I'm just like you. You know, and he was able to step back and see me take pictures with everybody and listen to my story. And that moment, even though he didn't understand my words, he understood my purpose and my mission. Oh, and, I mean, this deep understanding yeah. just between the two of you. And that's my, and that's part yeah. of my why. That's that's the one of the reasons why I fight so hard. That's the re- one of the reasons why when it does get tough, 
you know, I mentally pushed forward to, to really push through through that workout, whatever, because I know the little Charlies out in the world or the or the next generation that's, that may be a bit disabled or mm -hmm. facing the similar situations, they need me out there fighting for them so they can see my story. Amazing. And say, you know what? If he did it, so can I. So I ask people, what is your why? You know, why are you doing this? And if you can become peace at that, if you find peace within mm -hmm. that, the failures. It's all good. It's all, it's all good. Wow, awesome. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the Olympics, by the way, because I know that it's kind of crazy what's going on the news about you right now. <laughs> it is. I mean, no, really. No, like, it what is. What a whole crazy dichotomy of events this has been. So let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, it's interesting. So last year when I, I broke my world record and I ran 44.42 seconds in the 400 meters, that put me eighth in the world, legs or no legs, and fourth in America. So in now nation. you're racing. It's not just... Paralympians, no disabled. It's, Anybody, Just anybody, fastest runners in the world, and okay. it was interesting. You know, I've been planning on this, and if you if you even go back and look at my my interviews that I've done back in 2012, 2011, 2013, I said, hey, I want to run in the Olympic Games. That's my goal. I'm running in Paralympics. And I love Paralympics, but my goal is to run in the Olympic Games, the able fastest runners in the world. And, and now finally, you've qualified. I've qualified and run the time fast enough to qualify for the Olympics. Unbelievable. Um, and then literally about four or five days later, I get a, I get a letter from the Olympic Committee, um, the IWF, saying that I have an unfair advantage. <laughs> I mean. Like, are you talking about what? the guy that's missing his legs yes. has an unfair wow, advantage against crazy. the guys with legs. Yes. That's, and in a letter, too. In a letter, like, yeah, in email, yeah. In the email. So what do you was, do? I mean, what's. I mean, what do you do with that? It's, it's, I know it was it was frustrating at first. Yeah. Because um, you know, for me, you know, I train so hard. You know, I, I I'm out there working with Willie. Willie Galt is coaching me, and I I mean, we we set the mission years back, saying this is our goal. And he promised me, if you listen to me and you do everything that I ask you to do, I promise you, I, I, oh I can get you there. Gosh. And that's what we did. We worked so hard. You're day. still working hard. And we're still working I hard. Know you yeah, train yeah, with yeah. Them yeah now. I train, train with them. We're working so hard, and and it's unfortunate because I finally reached a time. And where, this is like years of training, yeah, this is right? Years. This, this doesn't just, happen overnight. This right. is years. And so and, you get to this point, you race and you you qualify, yeah, and yeah. then you get this letter. I get this letter saying you because you ran so fast, and because you're disabled, you must have an unfair advantage because no disabled man should be able to run as fast as the able-bodied runners. So you have an unfair advantage, which is the unfortunate part. Well, yeah. So I now train what? so like, hard. So I mean, it's a, it's a battle where you know it's. We're going back and forth and trying to figure out what what is it going to take for me to run in in the Olympic Games. I mean, I have nothing to hide. If you know, oh, they, no. they can, they can yeah. follow they can follow me around daily. If they if they follow walk a mile, I tell people walk a mile in my shoes, walk a mile in my legs. Really, really understand what I have to go through through the sores and the pains and the aches that I have to go through just to even get to the track. And you know, when I wake up every morning, sometimes my legs are swollen to where it's just painful for me to walk to the bathroom in the morning. Sometimes, you know, I have a sore, my muscles are overworked. So where I, I catch cramps or, or Yeah, this muscle. is all things that when you have legs, you don't, you know, you don't think about that. And, and these other runners don't think about that either. Don't even and consider. So what are they doing to sort of come up with the decision whether or not you, you technically now qualify? Yeah, so it's, it's a back and forth conversation of, of trying to find out what is it going to look like um, for for me to to qualify to have the proper equipment that's fair to the in the eyes of the beholders that that run the Olympics. Um, it's interesting because there was one Blade Runner before me who did run in the in the Olympic Games. And how did um, he do? And he took twelfth in the in the okay, in the Olympics. Okay, so uh, yeah, so but after he ran, they say it's a case by case situation. Okay. So <laughs> wow. So you don't know yet. So there are yet. they doing tests? Yeah, are they... we're, you know we're te we're doing a few testing. We're trying to. To negotiate, no one to say negotiate, just trying to navigate this tricky situation of understanding what is it going to take. And, I, and I'm an open book, let it, letting them know that whatever you guys need, um, what, whatever it takes, and, you know, I'm, I'm willing to, to fight this and to run in the Olympics. But it's interesting because I tell people, you know, me, a man without legs, trying to better myself, and I'm still facing, you know, walls. And, and negativity or, 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 you know, bad perception and perspective, trying to put hatred on me. So if I'm facing that and I'm a, a disabled man, imagine what you're going to endure in your life. Imagine what you're going to face. But I, I'm a true believer when you hit a wall, right? When, yeah. Just on the other side of that wall. No matter what you're going through. Right, whatever you're going through. If you're climbing a mountain and it gets steeper and steeper, literally on the other side of the mountain, that's an indication that a huge blessing is about to come. That's an indication that something big is about to happen in your life. But it's up to you to keep fighting. What happens is people hit that wall 
and they quit. And they give up. And they give up. They hit that one, they, they push, they push, and they get a no, and they turn around. Okay, so I have a question for you. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you know when to give up? <sighs> That's a good question. That is that is an interesting question. And the and honestly, if the mission is is right, right? It's a certain there's certain forms of giving up. But honestly, I believe in never giving up on yourself. You might have to redirect the mission, mm -hmm. right? Because because what I love about failure is 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 is, is, is I know it's no, tricky. I what know, I love about is. failure. This is what the show is all about. Yeah, yeah. So and, I get people, it. and people would be like, this. failure. Why, why yes. would you love to fail? What I love about failure is you're learning so much about yourself. But it's so not fun. It's like. so, it, it's, it's, it's so, it's so not fun. Oh, it hurts. It, it, hurts. <laughs> it, it hurts. It hurts so bad where you give it your all and you dedicate your life to something and, and you just know that this is your time, this is your moment, right? And you fall just a little bit short and a little bit short. But I learned that as soon as you hit, as soon as you fall short, what you do immediately after that, Right, what you do immediately after that failure is going to determine what's going to happen next. Right, and we still have control over that. We don't have control over life. Life is going to hit us. Life is going to come. Yeah, but you're right because after you hit, have a big, huge failure in life. I've had my own in my own career, believe me. But it's you're saying right after that happens, how do you deal with it? And that's the hard. That is point. the hardest it's part. It's the next day, the next the moment. The next moment, and I tell people when you uh. when you get the biggest failure, you should take advantage of that feeling. That feeling of failure just brings this level of awareness where you're like, okay, what did I do wrong? What didn't go right? Like you start doing soup, your th thought process becomes supernatural because you're feeling this feeling of like, I didn't do the right thing. Take that and apply that to your life. Take that feeling and take that energy and it's fuel to the fire. So when I fail, I take that and I get amped up by it. I fail yeah, and I, I think take that and, uh, you know? I think some, how do you deal with, like, because I think some of, some of the times, too, where I've had my biggest failures, it's how other people around you mm. respond. Mm. They don't call you anymore. They don't talk to you anymore because you're not on the biggest TV show anymore. That's tough. Or you're not on eight, you, you know, or you're not winning the races yes. like before. Or, and the people that you thought really cared about mm. you just, and you reach out, yep. you try and reach out yep. just to say, just because of being a human to yeah. human, yep. it's not about anything yep. more. And um, how do you, I mean, it's really hard. It's almost like when you're knocked down. Yeah. They just put that nail right at the corner. Man, that, that is, and that's one of the most frustrating parts. You is, know what I'm yeah, talking oh about, Oh my right? gosh, I, when, you, when you're on top and when everything is oh, going right. Everything's great. Everybody's texting you. You're going Every, to all the parties, you're doing this. You get invites to, everybody's checking yes. in on you. Everybody wants, wants to know Everybody wants to hire you. you. Everybody wants to hire you, but the, when, when things are going wrong, when it rains, oh. it pours and people, just it's, it's like it's like you put the light switch on and the cockroaches just like oh, they just, just go. they just scatter. They so just how scatter. do you work with like people that come to you with those kinds of questions when someone's mm. going through that? And and I, and I honestly say that's actually a good thing because they 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 exit out your life for a reason. You're right. You know, like your your circumstances put them in a in a tough predicament where they didn't want to step up to the plate, and you really get to navigate who the proper people are in your life instead of you cutting them off. Because the hardest part is sometimes is saying no. Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes you want, you know, we try to be good people. You want people to like you, you want too. People to like you want people to like you, so you just say, that. yes, I'll yeah. do this. And yes, I'll show up. And yes, you could come. And yes, yeah. I'll buy you this. Or, or yes, of course, I'll get that for you. But when you're going through a tough times, the proper people will step up in your life. And Thank that's you. and that's the people you want to keep in your life. And, and, it might only, and it's not only it's not always the people that you think. No, it's not. Right? right? Like right? you said, it was going to be two people. It might, it right? could be, and it could be a, two or three people to where you honestly you could at one point you probably had 30 people calling you in one oh, day yeah 20 30 people calling you one day but when you're going through it you might just have two people in your life that reach out to you and just ask me are you okay are you are you just or what can i do to what help? what can i do to help in this moment nobody there's not a it lot be, of people it that could be a help. cup of coffee and sitting down with somebody yes. and just give, give them your ears right but and but those people that step up to the plate when you're in the fire like when things are going wrong, yeah. that's the people you want to keep in your life. That's the people that's that's truly important. It's going to allow you to take it to the next well, level. Well, the person who's training you is one of those people in my life, <laughs> yes. Willie Galt. So let's talk about Willie, what it's like training with him. Oh, I my tried. gosh. Yeah. I tried, Blake. <laughs> oh, I, my I gosh. Yeah, it. I lasted so three tough. days with Willie. I was like, Willie, I can't do it anymore. He's, like about, he's crazy. Willie Galt, I mean, you have, I mean, you know. What's training with him it's like? It's amazing. His mindset is, is just... He, <laughs> Every day he wakes up, he said, I want to be the, the strongest, fastest, 
men in the world. I don't care what age you are. I don't care what race, creed, color that you are. I'm going to give 120%. And he's transferred that mindset into me um, to say, Blake, if you want to be the best in the world, there are no days off. It, the, even though you might rest, you might recover. Yeah, but you're but, resting as a part of your training. But your not... resting is part of your training. There is no days off. And he explained to me, if you can get to a point of never taking a day off, then you're never playing catch up. To where I used to back in the day, before he started coaching me, I would run my season. And I would go home after the season. I would take a month off, maybe two months off, just to rest and relax. Because, hey, I earned it, right? I, I had, a tough, had a tough, <laughs> had a tough year this year, right? Yes. So then, but if I would take two months off, then by the time I get back into the season, it would take me about a month to get, get back in shape. And once I get back in shape, it'd take me another month to kind of get really back into the routine. So now we're talking about a four month period that I've kind of taken for myself where he doesn't believe in that. He said, we'll give you, I'll give you No, seven. when you said that, I mean, I know that you're training with him and when I found that, I thought, oh, I just, uh -oh. I, I can't even like imagine yeah, what you go through on a intense. daily basis he gives me a week off he gives me a week off all year. yearly all year long so we train I, I joke but it's seriously about 345 days throughout the year because it's just holidays and but once you take a week off and that's it you never lose it and so it was interesting because oh, you know true. he played football he went to the, he played in it for the he was a super bowl champion for the 85 yes. bears and you know he's a first round draft pick and, and he's the fastest man on the planet over 50 something i don't know fastest but. man in the planet over 50 and i asked him like so you know here he is with you know oh, with the 12 like, pack ripped. i know <laughs> with the 12 pack. And, I, and i asked him like how like how did you how did you stay in such good shape after you retired and he looked at me crazy he said retire I never retired. No, he's at the track every single day. And it clicked for him. He said, that's, in his mind, in his head, he never. It doesn't exist. He never retired. Right. He, he's still training as if he's going to the Olympics oh tomorrow. And he's still training if he's the fastest man in the NFL today. He's still training as he's writing a script for the Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl shuffle. Right? I always give him a hard time. You know, we, I was at his house on Easter day. And, yeah. you know, we had for Easter, was, we had a we had a barbecue chicken salad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like him. <laughs> yeah. That is that is but him. I want to know. So I know that you travel around the world yes. and you speak. And, yes. Um, I know you have so many people telling you to write a book and everything. But what do you what do you speak about? Like, what is your? I mean, aside yeah. from you probably have a di bunch of different things. Yeah. But. No. Um. But but the 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 main thing that I, that I speak about is just that 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 proper perception and perspective that yes. it takes to be. You know, for me, an Olympic champion. You know, my goal is to win gold medals on the track. But the reality of it is. You should try to win gold medals in, in, in world. You should try to go break world, world records in whatever you do. If you're a chef, you know what I mean? If you're an artist, you know what I mean? If you're a lawyer, a doctor, whatever the mind, whatever you are, an actress or an actor, whatever it is, you should have the mindset of being the best in the world. And, and what it takes to be the best in the world is, is looking at yourself and saying no excuses. You know, leave the, leave the excuses at the door. The reality of it is the fact that I was born without legs, I have a bag full of excuses that I could throw yeah. at the world and, and people would be like oh, you know what you are right you can take this day off they would yeah it's true but so the, it's really up to you it's up to me so the second i say you look at myself in the mirror and leave that bag of excuses yeah. at the door when i walk out the door you, should, you can look at them you can talk about them you can have them but when it comes for us it's for all us, it comes it, to each <laughs> an individual individual yeah. but if you really want to take it to the next level you leave those excuses at the door and say you know what my adversity is my advantage and the only true disability in life is a bad attitude and once you kind of put that perspective and, and stay positive when in negative situations, mm -hmm. your, your life will change exponentially. I, I, I guarantee it and I promise it because it worked in my life. I was born without legs. I know. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm able to become one of the fastest wow. men in the yes. world. Yes. You can't tell me nothing's impossible. All right? If no, it's true. The right mindset. And, if you, and um, you know this too as well. If you, if you believe it and you manifest greatness mm -hmm. into your life no matter how low you get if you can manifest greatness and say i'm going to be great i'm going to do this right i'm going i'm going to succeed in this i'm going to prosper in this that's out there into the universe it you know it's really interesting too because um i would say one of my biggest you know accomplishments when i was younger is i was miss canada right yeah. so it is yeah. what it is but that's awesome. um it was very interesting because i wouldn't say i was the best right. i mean you are the best right. runner right. you run and it is right. it's very, you know what I mean? It is what yeah, it is. Yeah, it is what it is. But as winning a pageant like that, it's, I believed I was going to win. 
and I, it's not like I, I thought to myself, oh, I, I'm not the best or whatever. Right. There's other women that were in the pageant too yep. that could have won as well. But yep. it was it was amazing to see how far you can go when you do believe. The power of belief. The power of belief. And it's all you think about. And it's all you dream about. That's it. And every time you're driving your car or you're walking down the street, you're imagining yourself winning that title. That's it. And what happens is once you, like for me, I believe that I want to be the fastest man in the world. I believe that I can be. You're already fastest. there. I'm already there. Your mind's already won. Well, yeah, you right? put that out there, then you slowly start conforming to it. Yes. Once you put that into the universe, then, then it's out there. Then you start figuring out what is it really going to take for me to be the fastest man in the world? What is it really going to take for you to be Miss Canada? Like once you put that out there, then you conform to that. So when you're thinking all negative thoughts and you believe into the naysayers know, and the haters, so true. And, and then that means you're putting negativity out there. But it starts with inside you, that belief no inside. How hard it gets, yeah. And if you can conquer that and, and say, I'm going to be the best and truly believe it, Thing, real, real miracles start happening. They, they really do. Blake, <laughs> I just love this. I mean, seriously, you are absolutely a true life master. <laughs> as as that sounds, yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> but thank you so, thank you. so much for coming on the yeah, show. Thank you so much. I'm so thankful to Willie too for yeah. you know getting us in touch and having you come on the show. So awesome. Thank you so much. All right. So if you want to listen to this uh, interview again and again and again, which I know I will check out, um, we are on Apple TV on EverTalk TV. We're also on our podcast, Life Masters TV podcast on iTunes. I'm Tanya Memi. And thank you again for an incredible interview with Blake Lieber. You have just listened to another inspiring episode of Life Masters with Tanya Memi. To access the show notes for this episode or to listen to more shows, simply visit www.tanyamemi.com. Master your own life and be inspired to help others to succeed. Join us again next time here on Life Masters.